All right, ladies and gentlemen, today we're talking about the most powerful GMRS radio that's commonly available for you to get your hands on. This radio, however, here is not it. This is a QIT KT980 Plus. This is a VHF UHF ham radio. It's um, channelized, or you can take and use the VFO for selecting your frequencies. VHF, it's around 75 watts. UHF, it puts out about 50 watts. You can program GMRS channels in this. It's not really type accepted for that, but who really cares? Nice little radio. I have one of these in my truck. I have one of these in my boat. They perform well. They're inexpensive. Nice little rig. This is uh, an example about what you would find for a 50 watt GMRS mobile radio is about this size. Weighs about two pounds or so. But what we're talking about, mm. Uh, uh, is this 11 pound behemoth this is a Kenwood TK890H commercial UHF radio dual power setting on high setting you're pumping out about 100 watts on your low setting you're about 40 to 45 watts which on the low setting is perfect to stay in range with uh, your GMRS. So this does not have a VFO where you can select your frequencies. You're gonna have to program your channels in there for that. So when we received this guy, it was in okay shape, but it needed some love. It was out of tune. So it went on the bench and got retuned, completely clean, custom paint job put on it, and then it was programmed up. Did uh, modifications, this particular control head does not include an internal speaker, so we wired an internal speaker to it. And did a few other little changes to the, uh, to the electronics to make it a little bit more suitable for the needs that we need it for. The really cool thing about this radio is because it's rated for that 100 watts, the duty cycle, and just to give you an idea and look at the size of these things in comparison, about the size of a standard, GMRS Mobile, this big guy. The duty cycle rating on most of these radios is anywhere between 20 and even on the high side, 40%. That means with a 20% duty cycle rating, you're transmitting 20% of the time and receiving 80% of the time. The same is true for this commercial radio. I think this has got a 40% duty cycle rating on the high side, but you have an almost continuous duty cycle on the low side, which makes this an ideal radio for your transmitting section of a GMRS repeater because it's just heavy, heavy duty rig. And I would have to say in my experience with using these Kenwood radios, uh, Motorola's, the Vertex, the commercial products, when converted over for GMRS use, they are absolutely fantastic. Um, one real cool thing with this is it can be used with a remote head. So instead of pulling the head off this or trying to get it in the shop, I just grabbed this one here that's going to, to be refurbished. All the buttons on here with the software can be fully programmable. You can have them literally do anything, including controlling up to, with this model, I think three different relays. So if you had this mounted in a vehicle, if you're electronically inclined, you could actually use three of these buttons for turning on light bars, light pods, or everything else right through this one control head. And you would have to mount this remote unit onto the head of the radio, and then you have a cable that runs up to this, which is nice because this thing is so big, you could mount this underneath your seat, behind a seat, anywhere in your vehicle you could mount that. And then the only thing that you really have to worry about, just to give you size perspective on this thing, is just to mount this control head. There are a few different options you can get for the microphone. It does have a proprietary 12-pin connector that goes on there. These mics can be a little pricey. They can go anywhere between $45 and $65 just for the microphone itself. Uh, a lot that you find will have the cable split, so sometimes you have to get one of these replacement cords on it. This is one of the noise-canceling microphones, but the genuine Kenwood noise-canceling microphone with this particular radio with the Super Heterodyne Receive, absolutely phenomenal audio. 
Um, the Motorola's also compare well, and the Vertex radios compare well. I'm sure there's a, a whole plethora of other commercial radio manufacturers that I'm leaving out. But in comparison to some of the Chinese-made radios, not that there's anything wrong with that QYT that we had earlier, these commercial radios converted over for GMRS use are far superior, way above and beyond most of what you can find on the market. And to further elaborate on this radio itself, if I had to describe this as an analogy, imagine Gina Carano and Chuck Norris making a baby in a radio shack. That's what you've got right here. So on the back, there is a DB25 accessory port that gives you access to like PTT, audio in, out, some of the auxiliary functions. You got your UHF SO239 slash PL259 connection there. Then you have your power and accessory plug there as well. The entire body of this thing is manufactured by a cast, I believe it's a magnesium aluminum, like a Zamic type material. It dissipates heat extremely well. Um, just a tank, a beast tank of a radio. Now we're gonna set this radio up and do some testing. We've got a repeater that is 42 miles away. Now the repeater height the way that's set up, it should only have about 25 to 30 miles of coverage. We're 42 miles away. I'm going to be setting up here at a height of about 24 feet. And our radio horizons shouldn't meet, shouldn't be able to establish contact. But where I'm on one side of the Chesapeake Bay, the repeater's on the other side of the Chesapeake Bay. We have this big saltwater mirror that's in between us and the repeater. Now, the frequencies that we're going to be using with GMRS, you don't get surface wave propagation of any appreciable amount, but you will get ground gain. As our radio horizon meets that saltwater mirror, we will get some reflection up to the repeater and back, and we're going to make use of that phenomena to make contact where our radio horizons do not meet. So this is a really cool experiment, and we're going to get right to it. Alrighty, so here's our really high-tech test station in all its glory. We've got a battery, the radio, the mic, we got cable going up, our Harbor Freight 20-foot pole with a little mast on there. And then just to give us a little bit of extra chance of making this happen, I've got our homebrew uh, five-element Yagi up there. So let's see what happens here. All right, we're gonna give this a go and see what happens. Radio check, long range radio check and antenna test. Anybody a copy? How do you read? Radio check, radio check, long range radio check and antenna test. Does anybody copy? How do you read? Station calling, give me a short count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You doing a long range radio check, Eastern Shore of Maryland. Excellent, Eddie. I'm actually using this for a YouTube video. Do you mind if I use your audio in the video, sir? That's fine. Yeah, go ahead. Thanks, Eddie. I certainly appreciate that. And like I said, I'm about 42 miles out from the repeater. Yeah, that's a hike. Uh, are you using a, a Yagi or a Gretchen? 
I've got a homebrew uh, five element Yagi and I'm using that with a gamma match and that's running through a Kenwood 890 pumping out about 40 watts. Excellent, Eddie. I certainly appreciate the report. Thank you very much. You have a great day. Good deal. 42 miles. We made contact with Eddie over there and sounds great. Said we had no static, no hiss, no nothing. So definitely success. Awesome. All right. After that last test, it's pretty promising. We're going to do some real silly shit now. We're going to try one that is 57 miles out. Again, radio horizons shouldn't meet but uh, we'll give it a chest and see what we come up with. Do a long range antenna and radio test. Long range antenna radio test. Does anyone copy? This thing is I-22, can I assist you? Yeah, I'm doing a long range radio test. This is over here on the eastern shore of Maryland. How do you copy, sir? That is about 57 miles from my location. What's the uh, what's the elevation of that antenna there, sir? Uh, about 250 feet. That is impressive. I'm uh, using this audio for a YouTube video. Is it okay if I use your audio in that video, sir? Certainly. I certainly appreciate it. That certainly helps. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. You have a wonderful day. Tell more. You too. Uh, K A E 4617, St. Mary's 922. Excellent. That 57 miles. That is impressive. If you're interested in getting one of these radios for yourself, you can certainly go online and outsource the radios, do all the refurbishment yourself reprogram, tune, and all that good stuff. If you want to shortcut all that and have us take and send you a radio already packaged, ready to go, we'll program uh, local repeaters in there for you, all the GMRS channels. You have uh, two groups in there. You also have high power and low power. You can choose whichever one you want to use, obviously. We can do that for you. I'll have, leave a link uh, below in the description where you can take and contact us for more information on having us put one of these things together for you. So, Also, we have uh, new videos that's going to be coming out. We're going to be going over low band VHF next. We're going to have a whole series on those as well. That's also going to be using refurbished commercial equipment. So, All right, that wraps it up. Thanks a lot. Have a good one. See you next time.